I don't know, man. That's a conversation for another time. No. I, it really is, dude. It's, it's just me sometimes, man. Like, I, like Palutena, I don't know, man. I, it's one of those characters that sometimes I feel like I lose to the character, but I have to play it. But, man, Dragneo, hopefully he will prove me wrong and see what skill he's got here against Kason. All right, now this is one of those matchups where Palu's going to be jumpy a lot, so I, I want to see things like a rising up air from, uh, from Jason. But the issue is if he's not correct on his guesses, then he's going to jump into like a Palu in a minute. Yeah, that was really good. You see, you wanted to see a rising up air too. We kind of saw rising back air, but he overshot it just a bit here. I do like the fact how Jason likes to play the dash dance game here and goes for the grab. Yeah, and that's the other thing is uh, there are some characters in this game that they can dash grab and punish Palutena in there. It's not yeah. going to auto cancel on a short hop. Uh, so that's what you really have to be looking to get the punish on. And it does have those full frames of landing like you can find the opportunity to do to punish it for Exactly. Well. All right, so the photo just going to get drag or get Jason rather off stage. Looks for the back air after the down throw, but he doesn't find it. Now he's just going to get forced onto the ledge here. Good pressure from Jason. Uh, Nice. He was trying, I was going to say, he looks like he was trying to come in from the scene. I was going to find up the ground last time here. Able to avoid the explosive flame back throw to get the stage control and the edge guard. Like charge of flood here. It's going to be really useful. Oh, and a nice two frame back here. Just keeps the hitbox out. Dragon not going to get the tech. And I actually want to point out, I really like the aggressive drift in we saw from Jason. Yes. Because yes, I, Dragon Hill looked to punish him drifting away onto a platform with an explosive flame. And instead, he, he drifted in, got a free grab, and got that stock for it. Able to recover the stage here. Overshoots the up. He's still worth it though, because he does get Palutena off the edge. Oh, and he rolled to the explosive flame. Not out just yet. He's got to watch up the recovery here. Yeah, and I feel like that was a really good mix-up to the Dragon Hill because there are two different variations of the explosive flame. Mm -hmm. Whether you do it as a tilt input or a smash input, uh, exactly. there's two different distances. And that one being the shorter one caught the roll in. Dragon Hill with a sick back here, going to be able to close out the stock. But an amazing string right here from Jason is going to put him in a huge lead. Looks for a photo, but doesn't find it. Jab just gonna put this on off stage. I will, or sorry, drag me off stage. I, that would have been a good read on a spot dodge. I'll give him that. Yeah. But a roll in, not gonna get caught. I, so here's one thing for Jason too to also understand. He's been going for the aerial fireball, but he kind of has to be careful too because Palutena can punish Mario for getting up in the air with that, and Mario will eat a really big punish down tilt. But Jason oh, in that's such it. a that's tough a spot, and it's the spot. Auto reticle as an Edward is actually so underrated. If you catch a character out of the jump, there are so many characters in this game that can't recover from it. Yeah. I near into an up air. I like that he didn't go for another near extension. Saw Jason was kind of drifting away. Mm -hmm. Didn't. Maybe he wouldn't have got it. Maybe he would. Instead, just go for an up there. Up air. All right, get his guaranteed damage. I like the use of O smash there, especially right there in the roll distance for the tech roll. But unfortunately, Jason had to give Jackie a little bit more credit. They go for the back air. What credit do I give a man when he sets himself up for the back air? Especially I, the explosive flame too. I feel like I really like what we're seeing from Jason, where he's punishing these explosive flames. So many mm -hmm. times I see like explosive flame come out, and people just hold shield when they're in between Palu and the flame, just because they don't know how low or how much lag it really has. She can't move until the flame is gone, basically. The whole yeah. time it's expanding, she's in lag still. Exactly. That's why you see some players go for it when it's off stage or like jump steady. Yeah. He likes to go for it when his opponent is at the ledge to force them to hold shield or respect it. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's a really great move, but you also have to understand what's the best time to use it. Up air to catch the neutral landing. He's got to watch out because he's going and for the ledge. That's the explosive flame I really like right there. Gets mm -hmm. the up air, and then a lot of people there are going to be like, oh, I want to drift away, get away from that, maybe air dodge out. And you throw the explosive flame out, it punishes the air dodge. Yeah, it's really good when you trap your opponent or when you, when you understand when your opponent's going to be forced up on the ledge. Nice. I, I, like, out. I saw that from Dragon. He was angling the shield. He didn't want to get shield poked. I feel like we're going to see another explosive flame from the Dragon Hill. It's either going to make or break this game. Yeah, I like the empty hop, though. He was looking for it. Power right, Jason, i got to watch out on oh, the roll. That was an ambitious up smash right there from Dragon Hill, but it doesn't pay off one. He was going off the deep end for the back air. Oh, no, he runs right into the forward tilt. That, that hitbox lasts for so long, actually. Yeah, it does. Forward tilt, forward tilt is like one of those moves that you kind of have to really like, you don't want to see it that often, but you have to respect it too because it doesn't have a lot of hitbox. Yeah, and the thing is it's actually a pretty good ledge trapping tool because people will like start the neutral grip, you throw it out, and they're like, okay, I'll do my get up and shield. Yeah. And just last the whole get up. Exactly. It's crazy good. Forward tilt's also really good because it also sticks on the ledge as well. Very similar to Falcon down tilt actually, it's in that sense. So they both stick up the ledge, you can definitely catch your opponent on two frames. 
Alright, it looked like Dragonel actually hovered Lucina for a second, said that game was close. Lucina's still a good matchup versus Mario. Yeah. But he won, he's gonna stick it out with the Palo Tiff. T Sunbill wasn't that far behind too, so I wouldn't have respected the Palo Tiff switch as well. But we'll see how T Sun can handle against Dragon Hill. He's going for the Nair loops and he puts him off the stage. He wants more with the back air. That was really solid right there, comboing into the back air. I feel like if Dragon Hill's able to just kinda quit the panic option so much, that was one of them that I'm talking about, then he's gonna start running away with this, but Jason was getting a lot of punish damage onto these little panic options that Dragon was throwing out. Claw Bears, once more off the top here. I love the drift in there. <laughs> There's an enemy out there. I can't remember, I can't believe it was High Score Girl or, or not, but they're playing like Smash for the 3DS, and the character definitely has more comments. I apologize for that reference, but hey, more to I, the FSC. I don't know. Mario's broken in every iteration. I, smash. I like that because he catches the landing. Yeah, and the thing is, staying under Palu is really good because, like, the only thing she can throw up below her is either a downer or a nair, but those aren't incredibly disjointed below her. And a great timing on that down tilt combos it into the back and gets the first stop. Yeah, you run out of Legend Vincent if you have higher percent, too. Yeah. But yeah, back to what I was saying is that if Mario's able to run under and throw an up smash out, nothing Palu has is going to beat that on landing. Yeah. Uh, so I like that we're seeing that from Jason, and now 63% and counting. Looks for forward air. That was really good too, because of the way how he I pretty much put him at the platform with the up airs, Jason had done a lot of control against Dragon. He was afraid to get him from the ledge. I'm sorry, from the platform. Nice. Gonna give him a run around. I mentioned how Jump that he loves to go for those options here, and Dragon he'll definitely goes for the right one there. You can do it at the ledge to force your opponent to hold shield or respect it. And if they don't, they may take the damage and they'll the ledge for you. Yeah, but that's one of those things you can't consistently rely on. It's gotta be a mix up because, again, it's an incredibly laggy move. If it doesn't connect in the hurry off state, you're basically gone. Yeah. But you got a pretty good teleport to recover, too. It's got a decent range. I'll say not even decent, a little above, above average, too. Pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Probably was a good character. Oh, it's like a fern into the auto reticle. That would have been nice to get that much percent off that. Yeah, that's one of those things you throw the auto radical out there, and if they don't press a button, they actually will catch them sometimes. Yeah. Nairo was very, very, very yeah. skilled getting those. I looks for the gap. <sighs> don't two do it. Smashers. So I respect it too because at the opportunity, right, like Dragon I definitely would have like shot hot in there or something yeah. out of the corner. And I would have called that option too. Exactly. You, gotta, you can't dark wizzy it, man. You can't dark wizzy it like that. It's got to mix it up. And especially with the way that Dragon understands, it's the third time he's gone for it, as he's going to be way more alert at the ledge. Yo, man, he's playing like the Buzz. Just throw these backers just, out. Yeah, just throw these backers out, and if Dragon going to go ahead and play like Wizzy, we'll play like uh, the Buzz. That's a bad throw. That's going to be a kill. Zero, zero right now. Last stock on game number two. Can Dragon mm -hmm. close this one out? I feel like Jason's kind of had the control, but right now, okay. again. He's going to watch all of them come back on the stage here. Nair goes for a backer afterwards. I like it. The back air. The thing about back air and dash attack too is intangibility is perfect for challenging a lot of Mario's options oh, yeah. too. And that's kind of the thing is we see like if Jason wants to go for a landing Nair, he's just going to get dash attack and he's going to lose. It's not going to trade. Exactly. That's why he went for the dash attack too. Yeah, you can't be pressing buttons on landing against Palu because you can just ignore them basically. Oh, he read that roll, but he's just a little bit too far away, a little too slow. Daily and a dollar short here. Oh, nice. he caught him. He caught him. Yeah, and that was kind of. I understand the idea from Dragon Ball. These dash tracks were working out for him a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason was getting kind of aggressive, trying to jump in on him. And the dash track definitely would beat that, but Jason keeping a cool head said. You're going to approach me, you're going to miss space something, and then I'm going to forward smash you and win this game. Yeah, the thing about it too, you also have to understand, is they worked for him well when he had Mario in a tumble or a tech situation. Yes. Where Mario can go for, like you said, landing there. That's when they worked the best here, but that situation there, it was not going to be the hard play. And Jason finally punishes Dragon Yield for one of those options. You, you had him right the first few times here, but you have to understand when they work right. Game I'm so three. Gonna stick to Palutena here. He hovered the Lucina, but it never came out. Therefore, 
Dragon Ball, but it pops him out of it. Not going to be able to extend it because he doesn't get the last hit. Gets the forward airs. Just poking Jason out. I like the ad adaptation of Saint Dragon Ball using his range more. But Jason just opening him up with one up air and keeping this game up even. Nice. Oh, like he's using the whole stage here to actually kind of go through all. That was big. That was so good from Dragon Ball because he dropped down. Looked like maybe he would get like a drag down there or something. And mm -hmm. Jason had to go high to avoid that. Use the spot up of it to beat out Dragon Ball. Not but only that, Dragon Ball jumped back and got back. Yeah, and not only that, it dash dances too, right? To kind of let go of the ledge here against Jason. Ooh. He landed, okay, so that was really good, but unfortunately he landed on the platform. And he want, that's, you want to make sure you don't land on anything, so that you go below the stage and then go for the teleport on the top to me. Yeah, and that's what we were talking about earlier. It's a good option, but you can't throw it out recklessly, because if you mess it up, you're in such a bad position, and they can get it for go for it. Yeah, and you mentioned the end leg too, right? Yeah. Palatina is stuck in that for the entire duration. The forward smash from Jason. That's going to give Shaggy a two-stock lead. Yeah, that's big. He catches a jump from Jason on the three nares. Looks for a back air afterwards, but he's not able to find it. Already overlapping percent, though. That was a good grab. <laughs> I feel like he wanted to teleport cancel, but unfortunately he missed the timing here, and he's going to end up big. top? No, he's no. good. He's good. He DI'd it correctly. If you DI it wrong, you will lose your stock that way. I let jump into the back air. Jason still keeping this game super close. I love the use of the cape right there. Just if he, if Dragon Ball game perfectly sweet about that, he would have lost his stock. Yeah. These two are pretty much going blow for blow. Jason has 32%, but what does it matter when he has so much stage control? The up smash! He felt the Mario main's inner column, and he kind of lost a little bit of control there. Yeah, and I feel like we're seeing Dragon Ball look a lot more comfortable on this game. Not throwing out as many panic options, just playing his game. Respecting what Mario has, but not being scared of it. Yeah, building the Palutena wall of the aerials too exactly. as well. Exactly. Just kind of playing the slower space game instead of trying to force anything. That's that dangerous. You can't. Uh, you can't grab that. You can't Not even power. Nice using the fireball to come back on the stage here. Scoops him up with the down tilt, but not enough from the percent there to go for the down air. Oh, and a good tech. We saw Jason get that the very first stock of this game. Dragonio kept that in his mind though. He said you can't get it a second time no matter how different it is. And the backer Dragonio with a little pop off, man. Even yeah. though that was a two stock, that was an intense set. That, that was what I like to call the fist bump celebration. Yeah. That li little Tiger Woods fist bump right there, you know. Just <laughs> you, you just won your like 15th PGA World Tour. Yeah, man. just a little eye. <laughs> but no, a little little mini pop off, you know, nothing too big, but definitely very happy about yeah, that win. Most definitely too. It was the way how he would kind of establish control against Mario too. Like he had Jason was looking for it as well, but the big problem here is like he had good pressure at the ledge when he went for the up smash. The biggest problem is like he let that go, and then what he should have been looking for is different options because one thing that I would definitely say Dragneal was used to is that up smash from the ledge. Jason had a really tough aggressive the last two games. So I mentioned earlier how if you keep going for that, Jason's gonna, I'm sorry, Dragneal's gonna understand and he's gonna be ready for it each and every time. Yeah, it felt like the longer that set went on, the more desperate uh, Jason was getting to find mm -hmm. his stock, or to end these stocks. It was just so difficult, like he would throw out these up smashes, but he wouldn't find them and he'd just keep throwing them out. Yeah. And then he actually had that one where Dragnail tried to grab it, but he didn't commit to punishing that. Exactly. And not only that, it's also really important to understand like what's what are Palatina's options at disadvantage as well too. Because then you could try to find the best way to force one of those out and punish her for it. Yeah. I like to go give a shout out to Jason because he did go for this. He got so desperate, he went for the Smash Vortex, roll around behind the legend, go for a grab, and not even that worked. Yeah. So that yeah, was no, still pretty he, good. He did his best, but couldn't close it out in, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So coming up next on the stream here is going to be Marvelous Marco. I think it is. Yeah, Marco and, you know, both of these two players, honestly, Marco coming up from World 8, they, I, they just finished their last local for World 8. I, I don't know if they're going to be host, hosting any more locals. Dang. Um, end of an era. Yeah, end of an era. Uh, but shout out to them still for holding really good locals. I hear nothing but good things about them. And honestly, it's a really great game store. If you guys are coming here to Congo Saga and you guys are looking for a game store to buy physical games, World 8 in Los Angeles is located in around Koreatown, too. So if you're looking to get some really good Korean barbecue, definitely <laughs> uh, check out World 8. It's pretty good. Uh, pretty well-spaced area, too, as well. Uh, of course, there's also Nito. He's been on the up-and-coming list for, honestly, not even anymore because he's already here. Yeah. On the PR now, he was an up-and-comer, but 
kind of now he's just up there. Yeah, uh, most definitely too. The, the journey is kind of complete for him to reach that SoCal PR status. Now he's we, ha we had another up and comer too, Suga, but he's only like he's in, in chat. Just no, oh no, 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 he doesn't matter anymore. He only cares about dubs right now. That's oh, my. No, that's I, I just met. I saw him in chat right now. Don't worry about it. He doesn't exist. Oh, okay, damn. He doesn't exist. Yes, he does. He said he was coming out for blood. Slacking. What blood is he coming out for? One W and F? You call that blood? You call that blood, Suga? The one W and F? Damn. I'm calling you out, bro. You weak. Too scared of these people. You only want to yeah. fight. You can't fight people on yourself, so you have to fight them in dubs. Yeah, you don't have to do them like that. Weak man. sauce. Nah, I gotta call my house. I see it. <laughs> At least Marco out here shows up. If he lets you down, he's only letting himself down. Uh, That's it. Nah, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. So I did. I did mention how marvelous Marco is. Also, one of those really good. He's one of the few Tulik fans we have here in SoCal. Bro, I'm gonna be honest. I lost to him three times in three days, like a week ago. <laughs> I played, right. I played him in Weir's Finals and Grands of a tournament I was running. Uh, Race me or? No, uh, just, it was at Cal Poly. Okay. Uh, he beat me in Weir's Finals, I reset, then he 3 0'd me in Grands, and then I played him again at Highlander Con two days later, and he beat me again. 